morning and uh, thank you Dr. Vinay for having me on the course. And uh, I've been told to talk on trabeculectomy, which is diametrically opposite to what we've heard right now. I just start with saying life is a potpourri. We don't treat all people the same. We don't play all ball games the same. We don't even cook everything the same way. So how can we even think of treating a potpourri like PACG the same? So obviously you can't do surgery or trabeculectomy for all primary angle closure glaucoma, but for a large proportion of primary angle closure glaucoma, you need to do something. The treatment, of course, and all of these are PACG, and all of these eyes behave, look, and present completely differently from each other. The treatment depends upon the stage of disease when the patient comes to you, the intraocular pressure when they come to you, the visual potential, the status of the lens, the status of the other eye, and the status of the patient per se. It's important to remember at the outset that primary angle closure glaucoma is a blinding glaucoma, and I'm just going to quote this one study which showed that 91% of people from a population-based study in China who were bilaterally blind from glaucoma had primary angle closure glaucoma. So that's how important this disease is. And a review of published data with prevalence models of all glaucomas showed surprisingly that Asians are going to account for 47%, nearly half, of all the people with primary angle closure glaucoma in the world. But interestingly, India is going to account for one quarter of all of that. So it's not a disease that we can take lightly, and it's not a disease that we can generalize. So having said that, this course is about surgical treatment of primary angle closure glaucoma. So I assume these are patients in whom a laser iridotomy and medical management have not worked. So PACG has, means that optic nerve damage has occurred, and you need to treat the glaucoma. If the IOP is uncontrolled, they need surgery for the glaucoma. And other decisions are based upon ancillary findings, whether they have a cataract, whether the lens is thick or not, but you need to treat the glaucoma. Remember, synechial closure is going to cause continuous trabecular mesh damage, and wishing away that damage by taking out the lens is not going to work very much. So there's one randomized control trial I found of FACO versus FACO trap in chronic angle closure glaucoma, and they followed them all up for two years, FACO emulsification alone, surprisingly, was the most significant factor for failure to control intraocular pressure in these eyes, an odds ratio of 10.4. And the median extent of peripheral anterior synechae preoperatively was 270 degrees, postoperatively was 180. So you're not going to do anything to your synechae by just taking that lens out. Now what if there's no cataract? I think that's the crux of the problem. If there is no cataract, if there is primary angle closure glaucoma, and if the pressures are not controlled, then what do you do? So again, I look at evidence. 50 PACGIs were randomized to FACO versus TRAB, and isn't that what the debate is all about? So I'll quote from the study. Both FACO emulsification and trabeculectomy are effective in reducing IOP in medically uncontrolled CACGIs, or chronic angle closure, without cataract. Trabeculectomy is more effective than reducing the pressure, but is associated with more complications, and they leave it at that. If you read the article and you see the table, what are the complications of TRAP? A cataract, and a shallow AC in just two out of the 26. So we can't take out the lens only if required. Why do we need to take them out in all? Conversely, in FACO, five out of the 24 required a trabeculectomy. So all these poor people had their cataracts out in vain or their clear lenses out in vain. So remember, you're not actually treating the glaucoma by just taking out a clear lens. So there's so much that has been written and so much that has been thought and spoken and said about this. And thankfully now, there is actually a meta-analysis. I guess so much is written and so much is debated. So there is a meta-analysis and it's an interesting article to take out from the International Journal of Ophthalmology. And uh, they looked at all the non-RCT and RCT trials, and in a nutshell, what they found was to decrease the intraocular pressure, a FACO trap was superior than a trap, and certainly superior than a FACO. The crux is to treat the glaucoma, you needed a trabeculectomy. So this is the typical PACGIs that we come across. This is a 59-year-old male patient, 
618, 660 vision, 34 and 40 millimeters mercury pressures, closed angles, meibomian gland disease, and advanced glaucomatous optic neuropathy. The lens vault is about 700 millimeters. So logical sequence of treatment for him would be medically control the pressure, do a laser iridotomy, and do a trap. And what have we harmed by leaving him like this with control pressures, with one surgery? The lens is intact, everything else is good. So to summarize, I'll just go back to the potpourri again. The things in orange are my debate, where the pressure is uncontrolled. I'm not even looking at that where the pressures are controlled. So if you have a PACG, the logical sequence is to do a laser iodotomy, medically control the pressure, IOP is uncontrolled, do a trap. If you have a PACG with cataract and, the, and you have subsequent trap in mind, it makes good sense to take the cataract out, wait a few weeks, and then do a trabeculectomy. And if you have a PACG with cataract where the IOP is not controlled even on Dimox, it makes sense to take the cataract out, but it also makes sense to do a trabeculectomy along with it to control the pressures. Thank you.